This is a 82-year-old gentleman with good past health and no known liver disease. Presented today with Terry Stool. Hemoglobin level was 5, INR was 1.8. Performed fluid resuscitation and then proceeded to OGD. OGD this morning found a one column of grade 3 esophageal varices and also one column of query gastric varices with overlying ulcer and clot. This is the OGD finding with clinical photos showing the esophageal varices and the query gastric varices with ulcer and clot. So now we plan for an EUS to evaluate for possible GV plus or minus glue injection. The first OGD actually showed uh, some uh, you know, difficult to interpret findings because we saw very big uh, esophageal varices but then on retroflexion, we saw you know, what looks like maybe a vessel, maybe a nipple sign with an ulcer base on what could be you know, gastric varices. Because we think you know, the, um, you know, the area may be atypical for just uh, ulcers, you know, uh, especially in the setting of large esophageal varices. Uh, the presence of uh, you know, GV that has bled and now become underfilled uh, you know, is uh, highly likely. But of course, well, if it's just an ulcer with a vessel, then we have to do injection or heat up probe, but it would be uh, disastrous if we do a heat up probe on a GV. So that's why we propose to perform EOS to confirm the findings before we decide on the optimal therapy. And what I have here in front of us is my scope is just below the OG junction. And then uh, we have see these uh, snake-like tubular structures that is suggestive of gastric varices. Can we put on Doppler? So indeed, uh, we see uh, you know, uh, gastric varices here. I think they become more prominent after resuscitation. So I think uh, you know, our uh, suspicion is correct. So uh, here, now we see the gastric varices here. If I move up the scope, we also see uh, esophageal varices. Now, can you see some uh, big esophageal varices here? Oh, yes. Yes, so uh, near the uh, cursor. So what I'm going to do is, I think uh, since the stigmata of bleeding is um, actually on the gastric varices, so uh, I propose to perform a US guided glue injection uh, for therapy. Uh, Raymond, are the uh, gastric varices and esophageal varices are communicated? or they are in, uh, uh, not connected together? Uh, difficult to say because uh, on the endoscopic view, um, there was an abrupt change in caliber. So the grade 3 varices uh, were seen down to the uh, OG junction. But on the retroflexion, uh, the cardiac did not show uh, big varices. So, um, so we are feeling quite uh, strange that if they are GOV1 only, then uh, you know, I think the OV should also be more collapsed. So uh, there is a suspicion that they may not be GOV1 type uh, gastric varices. So here um, we do see that uh, this area could be extending into the fundus. So uh, I think if they're not GOV1, then uh, just for example, bending the esophageal varices may not uh, adequately treat the GV. Uh, so I think uh, that's why we propose to do a glue injection. Mm. Um, so will you consider? Sorry, uh, uh, will you yes. consider injection of the uh, both esophageal and gastric varices, or just the gastric varices with glue? I think for today, I would uh, you know uh, prefer to treat the gastric varices first because uh, usually you know. Um, Glue injection is, uh, has more data for gastric varices. Uh, for treatment of esophageal varices, uh, in PWH, like if we have a patient with very advanced uh, hepatocellular carcinoma with recurrent bleeding, then we would do uh, sclerotherapy with uh, histoacryl glue for the esophageal varices as well uh, to minimize repeated endoscopy. Uh, but in his case, since we have no known uh, liver disease and the diagnosis is unclear, so we will just uh, inject the GV first. So we have the target in view here. Uh, can you hold the scope? Yeah. So um, we are ready uh, to go in here. Uh, so my needle is coming in. So now we are in. Okay, we can so start uh, injecting some glue here. Yes. Oh. 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 
Okay, and then we can, uh, yes, we're changing to the pi dot pushing out. And so let's check the Doppler. How much you have injected? Histo acro that you Histo use? Histo acro, yes. So, so zero You mix it with Lapido? Yes. 0 0.5 histo acro plus uh, 0 0.7 uh, Lapido. So it looks like, you know, we have a uh, complete thrombosis of the GV here. So now what, uh, I'm going to withdraw the needle. So needle back. And then we are flushing water. So we are flushing the water, and then we're going to check the effect of this injection. So, so the big uh, varices looks like it's gone. And then we're finishing flushing. So we're going to take a look here. Uh, I think the area we treated here, uh, no big varices here. And then I'm going to check on the esophageal varices also. Um, okay, can you top learn? So the esophageal varices also looks uh, partially treated. So probably they are communicating, but so far the origin, we have a very strong flow in the esophageal. We still see some here, but uh, we may need to inject here too. So, uh, but probably the GVs are treated, but the esophageal varices are still visible. So I think they may not be GOV1 type varices. These are esophageal varices here. But for the uh, GV down here, I think uh, we have uh, obliterated the GVs here. Okay, so you, you're happy and, and just leave the patient like this? Yeah, uh, well, I think the other option now is to decide should we glue the uh, esophageal varices or just bend it. Um, my gut feeling is I may choose uh, bending for the esophageal varices because uh, we have no diagnosis of malignancy and the patient has no known uh, chronic liver disease, so we need more workup. So uh, for the uh, GV bleeding, I think glue injection is justified, but uh, whether we should glue the OV or not, I think... Uh, Right now, I think maybe too, uh, maybe a little premature to uh, do okay. glue injection for okay, the OV. Okay, thank you then. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Nice okay, thank you. Thank you.